Minor Livestock. Goats are ruminant animals. These animals are able to transform fibrous vegetation into final products like milk and meat. These animals are also capable of adapting to a wide range of climates, and they can be found anywhere from lands at sea level all the way to regions with an altitude of 4,500 meters, where we can find goat ranches. They can also adapt to different production systems. For example, they can be held in stables at all times, or they can be held in partial confinement, where they graze and receive supplements and corrals, or they can graze all the time. Now we will see a full-time grazing system. There are positive and negative aspects to grazing. There are positive aspects, like there is a great deal of forage available to the animal, which they eat at will. That way, they can get better quality food than they could if they were totally confined, where you can offer them forage directly on a tray. It has its disadvantages, meaning that parasites can easily recirculate. But here at the university, we have 16 paddocks and we rotate them every three days. Goats are very selective when it comes to their food and they prefer to eat forage and shrubs, since they contain a higher nutritional content than grass. A curious fact is that these ruminants are able to stand on their own two hind legs, and in some areas, they are able to climb trees with great ease. You have to keep the areas where they graze very clean, because they are so inquisitive, they can easily swallow garbage like this wrapper, and it could cause problems in their digestive system, even to the point of obstruction of the rumen, and they can die, as we have unfortunately seen in some places. Next, we will visit a goat pen in the village of El Hatillo, in the municipality of Barbosa, where the facilities are very modern. It's a goat pen that has some very peculiar characteristics. It's very modern, and its infrastructure is designed to provide for that animal's well-being. The goat pen is designed so that the animals are completely confined, and they are provided with food and supplements. This goat pen is built using only immunized wood. The highest point is 2 meters high, and the lowest part has a height of approximately 1.7 meters. The foundation of this pen is done in cement. It's all covered in cement, and it has an inclination of 5%. What is the reason for elevating this pen? The idea is that animals' excrement, urine, and feces fall directly onto the floor, where they can accumulate and later be turned into compost with earthworms. We then use the compost to fertilize the grazing fields. Las praderas. Minor livestock. TV Agro te acerca el campo. Mejor del campo. Minor Livestock. Right now, we are in the village of Alvarado in the municipality of Copacabana. 
We are in a goat farm owned by Luceli Coronado and Ovidio Cano, both of whom are goat ranchers that have been in the market for several years and have a great deal of experience in the field, which they will tell us about. We fell in love with the goats a long time ago, and after three years, we began to see them as a business, as an economically viable activity. We started our goat ranching project 10 years ago. Our idea at the time was to acquire the goats that we thought we needed. According to our criteria back then, we thought we would get a breeding male and start to improve the herd. The initial goal of this pair of goat lovers was to produce improved specimens and to position themselves in the market after four or five years by selling improved goats. We are now raising goats on an industrial level. We have a sizable quantity of goats. They are very docile animals, very easy to handle. The project worked out very well. The goats were reproducing, and the daughters always had a better morphotype than the mothers. And just when we thought that we had some good milking goats ready for the market, we were surprised to learn that in the marketplace, no one was interested in buying goats to start goat ranches. So then, we had to undertake the project ourselves. So then, we had to learn to milk the goats, and we had to learn how to manage milk production. And when we were producing sizable quantities of milk, then we had to start working on marketing our products. Ovidio will now talk to us about the system of goat ranching they have implemented, which consists of total and permanent stabling. When a rancher decides to embark on a project using total and permanent confinement, it means that the animal will always be confined. If I lock up my goats in a given place, doing so with the intent of raising productivity, then I am responsible for the air they breathe, for the water they drink, the food they eat, and I am responsible for the environment in which they are confined. Otherwise, their organism will defend itself by lowering or stopping productivity. There are no air drafts in the goat pen. However, the area is provided with good ventilation. Here, we supply water through these automated watering valves of the types used by pigs. They are located here. When the animal is thirsty, it will turn around, activate the valve, and drink water. Animal welfare is very important in this type of goat ranching. For these animals, mankind is an ally. They are so accustomed to us giving them everything that I can touch them. And it's as if a mother were caressing her child in the natural world. The goat would see man as a predator, like seeing a wolf. Here, We've broken with the idea that man is the goat's natural predator because our management system is very kind to the animal and puts them at ease. So we can see her feeding, drinking water, and eating well. She breathes good air and she is protected by us. So that's why we feel we have the right to use their milk for production. To confine a goat, you need a minimum space of one square meter. The birth should be at least one square meter. In order to have four goats, you will need a two by two meter space, for example. But we make births longer than they are deep because although that square meter is important for the goat's habitat, it's even more important for the birth to have more area dedicated to the feeding trough. So we need a space of two and a half by one and a half meters. You have the same approximately four minimum square meters but have more space for the trough. Here, you can see three goats feeding. If this one were the dominant goat, and if she wanted to dominate this one, she doesn't have time because this piece of wood is in the way. This trough is made for six, and there are three right now. With regards to pen hygiene, you must implement adequate management of feces, since they can become the source of disease. 
Pen hygiene. We floor with wooden planks that are spaced so that the fingers pass, but not the knuckles. That way, the feces fall below the pen. Since goat feces are round balls, it falls below, and the goats are never in contact with their own excrement. That way, we keep the area clean. Minor livestock. Minor livestock. Strong, healthy, and productive goats are the result of good management and excellent nutrition. Goats have another anatomic characteristic, which is that their lips are prehensile and very mobile. Their tongue is also prehensile, which allows them to be more selective than grazing ruminants, and they can therefore eat better quality food. It's an evolutionary trait. Visualize that a goat weighs one-tenth of what a cow weighs. So, a goat weighs somewhere around 50 kilograms. A cow weighs around 500 kilos. This means that it doesn't have a large rumen acting as a fermentation chamber. It has a small fermentation chamber. This implies that the animal has to look for high-quality forage. It is recommended that goat ranches use high-protein grasses that can complement the animal's diet. We feed them with 5,000 square meters of land reserved for planting forage grasses. The grasses that we use in feeding the goats are marafalfa, gold button, Tythonia diversifolia, and star grass. All of the grasses are used as hay. For mar alfalfa, the growth cycle ranges between 70 and 80 days, depending on the climate. For gold button, it's 50 days. And for cutting grasses, between 30 and 40 days. With the forage we produce inside of 5,000 square meters, we provide food for 100, 110, or 120 goats meaning that goat ranching is a very efficient industry because it can be done in small plots of land. And we want to emphasize that because that's our focus. In the future, not all of us are going to have large expanses of land where we can launch our production projects. There is a widespread misconception, which is that goats can eat anything, even paper. However, goats are much finicker eaters than cattle. Goats require high-quality food. The results of adequate nutrition and adequate food supply will eventually be reflected in the animal's production, both in the volume of milk produced as well as in the compositional quality of the milk. The grasses are taken to a chopper and they are cut and allowed to dehydrate. As the grasses are cut, they are gradually placed in dehydration beds. These consist of a raised platform where we put the grasses so that the air circulates above and below. Once the grass is cut, it naturally starts to lose humidity. The intent is to give the goats grasses with low moisture content and higher percentages of dry matter. The goats are fed at 6 in the morning, noon, and 5.30 or 6 o'clock. We aim to make all of the feed produced at the farm organic. We don't use any type of fertilizer. This is what is nowadays called clean production. The system by which we manage the goat ranch accounts for the relationship between the soil, the plants, and the animals. We cut the grass and we fertilize it with the goat droppings and the circle is complete. Soil fertilized with goat dropping compost produces sufficient green mass or forage to feed the goats themselves. 
minor livestock. Clase animal. Se pensaría perfectamente que un burro puede silbar, pero no. El burro rebuzna y no silba. Te ve algo con el lenguaje del campo. TV Agro. Trabajamos para darte lo mejor. Minor Livestock. A continuación. Next, we will learn about the phenotypical characteristics of a male and a female belonging to the Sanin breed. Regarding the Sanin breed's traits, the coat, or the color of the hair, must be white. Their skin should be pink although it's acceptable to have the freckles that we see here. You can have these freckles in the ear and in the groin region, so this one meets the requirements of a white coat. The ears should stand up, slightly bent forward. The smaller the ears, the better. As should be the case with most animals, the back should be strong. In this case, since it's a male, he should have good testicle formation, since that gives us an indication of his ability to produce sperm. The rather thin, dainty and angular shape of the legs may seem a bit thin, but it's a positive trait. It speaks to their capacity to produce milk. This is a milking breed. It's characterized by having the angularities of a milking breed. You see that in cattle and in goats as well. They tend to look angular like this. Everything they eat gets turned to milk. It's not like Brahmin steers or specialized meat production breeds that turn all of their food into muscle, meaning meat. This goat meets all of these specifications of the Sanin breed. White coat, pink skin, shape of the nose, the ears. It's a typical son and goat. Now we'll see male and female members of the French Alpine breed. Here we have a French Alpine goat. They come in different colors or color combinations. Generally, they come in bronzish tones, colors like this coffee color here. There are some that are black and white, coffee and white. There are many color grades in son and goats. They are characterized by having a white base with black or dark brown tones. The ears should be small and tilted forwards. Both in Sanin, as in the Alpine, the nasal arch should be straight or concave. Roman noses are not allowed. This is one of the principal traits. Reproduction is one of the goat's greatest strengths. The gestation period lasts for five months, meaning that in two years you can have three generations. Say that you have 80 goats, like we do right here, and they all come into heat at the same time. The goats will enter into heat for a span of 25 to 40 days. So you have to service them early in the season. That way, the goat calves are born around the same time. That's known as a seasonal reproductive process. You have to manage that with great precision, because if you lose that window of opportunity, the goats will go a long period without calving, and production is the goal. Immediately after servicing, the female goat must be removed. If it happened in the morning, it should be repeated in the afternoon. And if it was done in the afternoon, it should be repeated the following morning. We write down the date on the log. Then name and number of the goat, the name of the male, and the mounting date. I mark 22 days later on the calendar. If after 22 days the goat is not in heat, pregnancy is confirmed. Ovulation is every 22 days. 
if, by the 22nd or 23rd day, the goat didn't go into heat, then I am certain that a pregnancy was achieved. Goats give birth 150 days after conception. The birth is a natural process where humans rarely intervene. When you're a novice, you feel like you have to be the head nurse and you try to help them, but it's not necessary. Goats, gazelles, ruminants in general, have always birthed under natural conditions, so we only intervene after the calf is born to seal off the umbilical cord, put it in a pen, dry them out, and start to feed them artificially with a baby bottle. Goat's milk has many nutritional properties that are beneficial to the health of humans. Del ser humano. The goats each take their respective places. They know what their location is supposed to be. I want to highlight how willing they are to give humans their milk. You don't have to manhandle them at all. Goats and dogs were the first animals to be domesticated by man. That's where that reflexive instinct comes from, from their genes. They are aware that their milk is going to human consumption, and she's very willing. Cleanliness is critical to milking protocols. Therefore, each goat's nipples are disinfected with a product that needs to be later dried off. You must keep in mind to use a separate tissue for each nipple. Sealant is applied after milking. We milk twice per day. The first milking is done between 6 and 7 in the morning. The second, between 5 and 6 in the afternoon. When milking, we supplement with 600 grams of feed in the morning and 600 grams in the afternoon for a total daily ration of 1,200 grams. The milk obtained is then weighed, and it's poured onto the milk pail, where it's surrounded by water and ice, and it begins refrigeration immediately. After the milking is finished, we transport the milk obtained to the processing plant. Delicious and nutritious foods are made from goat's milk such as aged cheeses and myriad flavors of yogurt. After bringing the milk, we receive it here in the plant. We run it through a sieve and we begin the transformation process. Transform into what? We make pasteurized milk for sale as such. We make fresh cheese, Dutch-style aged cheeses, Lavadia aged cheeses, and yogurt. Goat's milk has many properties. I say it's a blessing from God because besides being lower in lactose than other milks, it's much faster to digest. We can digest goat's milk in half an hour. It has many good properties. For example, it has a lot of calcium that goes straight to your bones. The calcium that goat's milk has does not require support from vitamin D. It has a high percentage of vitamin A and potassium. It can help with the respiratory problems, allergies, and digestive problems. Another of its properties is its high content of essential fatty acids, linoleic and arachidonic acid, and high proportion of short and medium chain fatty acids, making it more heart friendly. Goats are very sweet, tender, and manageable animals. They are very easy to milk. A single person, a senior citizen, can easily work with goats. A very young person can also work with goats. They're very easy animals to manage, and they are affectionate to humans. So even though we have them stabled all of the time, they are very tender animals. People come to see them, and they want to be petted. These animals enjoy a high quality of life. A dream turned into a project dear to their heart.